Welcome back guys. So today we have some major announcements from Artemis and that is the announcement that three new ninjas are coming out in the near future and most likely we're looking at the beginning of May. So we got three things coming out. The Ninja V Plus, the Ninja V Pro Kit and the Ninja Stream. Now we originally had two versions already. One that just came out not so long ago which was the Pro Kit. Not the Pro Kit Plus but this is another one. And the original Ninja V. The OG version. So let's talk about all of the versions and see what's in stock for all of you guys because this is very promising. The original Ninja is able to capture ProRes 422 and DNX HR. Both of them can capture 8 bit and 10 bit. If you want to capture ProRes RAW, you have the ability to capture up to 4K 30p and 4K 60p. Anything beyond that was very. Um, I wouldn't say it was the best, but it was really tipping its limits. I know it can capture 5K and 6K with, with some cameras, but that's really pushing its limits. And not just the fact that it's pushing its limits, it's pushing the limits of the actual SSDs. But now you have also the option of capturing basically HVEC H.265 codec onto the Ninja by paying an activation fee of $99. Um, it's still pretty good. I wouldn't say that is a bad idea. I mean, like the base price is still five ninety five plus ninety nine. That makes it six ninety five, uh, six ninety five, six ninety uh, nine, six ninety four rather. So it's not that bad. So that's a major improvement that you'll be getting with the Ninja Five, and that update will be available uh, for purchase next month. Now, as you guys know, you're also able to buy additional side kits for you to add onto the Ninja, and that's SDI and the ability to uh, time sync your audio via Bluetooth. There's a device that you can add to it. So those are all additional add-ons that you can purchase. Now, as you guys know, about a couple of months ago, the Pro Kit came out as well for the original Ninja 5. And that just gave you the ability to capture uh, through SDI. That uh, everything was all integrated into it. So you had to do basically nothing. You got it and was set to go if you had the, if you had the cameras that actually provided the SDI output. Purchasing this Pro Kit was probably the best way to go. That one's 849 Both devices, the Ninja 5 and the Ninja Pro Kit, none of them accept Wi-Fi, USB-C, or Ethernet, nor do they have the ability to capture 8K 30p nor 120 RAW. Updating to the Ninja 5 Plus is quite a big jump. We're not talking 595 no more. We're talking $1499, $1,500, basically three times the price. There's a big difference here, and that's the ability for you to capture 8K 30p, and 4K 120p. Not all cameras can provide that resolution or that frame rate, so check with your manufacturer, check with your camera to see what is available out of the HDMI's or SDI's for that matter. Capturing 8K is not just the fact that it will capture 8K ProRes 422, although it can do it, is the fact that you'll be able to capture ProRes RAW in 8K 30p. That's a huge, huge improvement, and only a couple of cameras will be supported at the beginning of it, and that's coming th towards the middle of, um, of the year, I guess, I'm guessing. But the Canon R5 will be able to do it, as well as the FX6 and FX9 with, uh, let me see this here, with the uh, XDCA-FX9 extension to SDI. Artemis is only recognizing two cameras to capture 4K 120p, and that's the Zcam. E2 and E2 M4. So if you want to capture 4K 120 from this device, then I do highly recommend you guys get the Ninja 5 Plus or the Ninja 5 Plus Pro Kit. For $14.99, you're able to capture anything through HDMI, but if you still want to capture through SDI, you need to buy the module that you attach on the back of the Ninja. For that, if you want everything out of the box, set to go and all that stuff, they made another kit. That's called the Ninja 5 Plus Pro Kit. Do not get those confused because the original Pro Kit will cost you $849 and the newest Ninja 5 Plus Pro Kit will cost you $1699. That's $1700. But with the Pro Kit you'll be able to do just about everything. The only thing that you're lacking, and that's because it's part of this sheet that I have in front of me, is the fact that you still cannot have an Ethernet, USB-C or Wi-Fi uh, module attached to it. For that, they have a brand new model that's meant for streamers. So if you want to stream, if you want to do everything on the go, and I mean that when I say on the go because it does not require a computer, they're, they're coming out with a whole new version called the Ninja 5 Stream. And that will allow you to stream directly from your camera onto the Ninja. That has a Wi-Fi connection that you can just hook up to any Wi-Fi 
and then you can stream right away. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. It seems quite promising. There's no price on it. It says POA. I'm guessing like pending on announcement. If, that, if that's what it means, I'm not sure. But if you guys know, please let me know what that means. POA. The only downside to the stream is the fact that it cannot capture any raw files. So if you're looking to capture ProRes raw, it's just not meant for that. But you can capture small files in uh, H.265 and H.264 without a problem. And then you compress them, decompress them onto your computer if you want to later. But everything that you're capturing on the stream, it's basically meant for you to just release onto uh, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook Live, whatever it may be. It's just meant to go live right away. So that's the reason why it's capping out on that. There's no price, as you guys can see. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be quite cheap. Uh, I'm guessing probably in the 300 range. Based on this, I can say, yeah, I would say about 300. One of the problems that I'm not seeing being addressed in the newer versions is the display. The display right now is capped at 1,000 nits, and that's not going to change moving forward. It's still going to be 1,000 nits. The Video Assist 12G is 2500 nits it's very bright it doesn't matter if you're in direct sun you can see that screen really well the ninja 5 has problems especially especially if you switch your video uh, modes uh your monitoring modes rather and that is if you're going from rec 709 to pq to H hlg or your luts the luts tend to be quite dark especially for nikon and if you go to hq or hlg the monitor is very dark actually let me show you guys let me delete remove this up here the ninja 5 here i have it right now set to rec 709 in rec 709 the display is very bright i can see myself really well and that's what i do to record here the problem is if you take the waveform out and you actually want to monitor yourself as you can see i'm very dark the only way to get around that is by actually lifting uh you go to display you adjust the lift you lower your gamma and you increase your gains in order to see better under PQ or HLG. Other than that, I just hope that the monitoring on the display actually gets improved because if they can uh, work on the PQ and HLG version on how it displays on the monitor, then I do recommend you guys move on to the Ninja 5 Plus. In fact, I think the best option right now is the Ninja 5 Pro Kit, but $1,700, that seems like a very steep, very steep price. $1,700 for that, I mean like, the ability to capture 8K 30P and not fuzz with it when you're taking it to edit, it might be worth it. It just might be worth it. My understanding is that working with raw files that were directly captured onto the device itself, it's a nightmare working in, Pro, uh, in Final Cut Pro and in Premiere. So if that's the case, then this might be a welcome feature that it's actually worth paying for. I really think that there's something here for everybody. So whichever device you think might be for you please let me know in the comments down below so with that i'll see you next time